Hi, and welcome to Linux Talks with Techscare, episode 2. My name is João Correia, and I'm a tech evangelist with Techscare. Today, I'll be looking at the concept of CVEs. I'll cover what it means, why they are useful, the context behind their creation, and why they are important for IT teams. Let's start from the beginning. CVE stands for Common Vulnerability and Exposure. That's a glorified way of saying it represents a security vulnerability in a given piece of software. Why do we need CVEs anyway? Couldn't we simply refer to that vulnerability that affects memory management in application X or Y? Well, it turns out that it gets complicated really quickly to distinguish between different vulnerabilities without some form of standardized identification or reference. That's exactly what the CVE gives you. It gives you a shorthand reference to a specific vulnerability. This is also one of the reasons that led to the existence of CVEs in the first place. There were too many vulnerabilities across many different pieces of software and teams were finding it hard to properly keep track and address them in a timely fashion. The concept of a CVE list that track different vulnerabilities in a single list with a sequence of identifiers originated at MITRE in 1999 and it contained over 300 entries when it launched. That is remarkable, especially if you consider that in 2023 alone, there were over 28,000 new vulnerabilities disclosed. You'll notice the term disclosed that I just used. This is because the CVE refers to a vulnerability that is publicly disclosed. A CVE entry can be assigned but not disclosed for a given period of time, usually to give time to the original vendor or software creator to prepare and release a fix, so that when the CVE information is made available for everyone, the fix or the mitigation is already readily available. The importance of CVEs in standardizing vulnerability identification comes from having a more or less uniform way of approaching different security problems in software development. For example, a remote access vulnerability may look different on different applications, but when an IT professional faces a CVE description that mentions remote access, he or she immediately understands the context and the risk associated with it. This leads to faster and more appropriate responses being carried out to mitigate the problem. CVEs are also important in facilitating the sharing of information across different applications. Your security scanner may flag a vulnerability and tell you the associated CVE, and this in turn facilitates finding and applying the appropriate patch to fix it in a different application. It also standardizes reporting and compliance. This is especially important for the business side of things. You can state and check the presence or absence of a CVE thus keeping records of your operation. It's also especially useful when you're creating compliance reports for your business as it lets you show the absence or existence of any risk in your software stack. So why do CVEs matter to Linux users and administrators? They essentially enhance transparency and security. Having clearly defined problems leads to the existence of clearly defined solutions for said problems. Since security applications ideally provide and act upon CV information, it is easy to demonstrate their effectiveness and the level of system system security. However, it is important to keep in mind that not all vulnerabilities will have a CVE assigned, making those harder to track or even work with. In fact, this is an industry problem that can lead to a form of CVE blindness, where security software may simply report that everything is right simply because it doesn't have a CVE information associated, so that it doesn't know how to look for a specific problem. Okay, this is all fine, but how do CVEs actually work? A CVE identifier is a text string in the format CVE-year-number. For example, CVE-2014-0160, which refers to the vulnerability called Heartbleed. This tells you the year that it was requested, 2014 in this case, and the ID of the specific vulnerability, 0160. The number part gets reset every year. But how is this identifier created? Suppose you stumble upon a problem in an application, and you identify a path to exploit that problem that turns it into a security problem. For example, you find a way to abuse a web form submission process to execute code that you give it. After checking if there is already a CVE assigned and you find none, you can proceed to request a CVE ID creation with the CVE numbering authority, also referred to as a CNA, or you can do that directly with MITRE. 
there is a specific form submission on their website for this purpose. You'll need to provide a report stating the problem, mentioning that you've already contacted the software developer, which you should always do, and an accurate description of the expected impact to security, either to the application, to the system running the application, to the data, or any combination of these and other factors. The information can be made public at a different time, not necessarily when the CVE is created, but it will be made publicly available at some point. There wouldn't be much point to the system if it wasn't shared with everybody. CVE numbering authorities will keep track of the different CVE identifiers and they will ensure that there are no duplicate IDs being assigned. A CVE request will be reviewed and can be deemed acceptable or not. It may be reviewed and deemed to be simply a bug, for example, rather than a security issue. In that case, there will not be a CVE ID assigned. After being accepted, the CVE will also be assigned a score. The score will reflect the risk and scope of the CVE. This is a topic in itself, and we will cover it in the next episode of the podcast, so we'll look forward for episode 3 if you're interested in this. Now, the industry has shifted towards tracking and mitigating CVEs, rather than specific bugs per se. There have been many high-profile CVEs making the news, and I'm sure you'll recognize Heartbleed, which I've already mentioned, or even Lock4Shell, which has the ID CVE-2021-44228. As you can see, there were a lot of vulnerabilities in 2021. Compliance requirements have also shifted towards CVEs to keep track of the existence or absence of security problems in the software stack. In fact, compliance regulations will often contain references to addressing all CVEs within a given score range in a given period of time in order to meet those requirements. For example, you must patch all the high-risk vulnerabilities within a month, for example. This makes it those requirements important not just for the technical side of the organization, but also gives direct business relevance to vulnerability management. There will be many ways to address CVEs, depending on the specific issues in each of them. The common denominator, however, in addressing CVEs will always be either deploying new software versions or deploying security patches for specific applications. This can range from patches for a given application or, in the case of Linux, patches for the kernel, the services, or the entire application stack that's running on the system. In the Linux case, distribution vendors will have mechanisms to track security vulnerabilities, like security advisories and databases, and in all those mechanisms, there will be some type of link to CVEs. Either they will be mentioned, or there is some translation process in which you can check the existence of a CVE for a particular entry, or the reverse is true. Searching for a CVE identifier will always lead you to the right security advisory for your given Linux distribution, containing the information on how to address or mitigate your problem. This concludes our look at the importance of CVEs. The best approach, when in doubt, is always to keep your systems and applications up to date. Deploying patches as soon as they are available is always a good choice. If patching is a concern because it can be disruptive, look for alternatives like live patching, which can provide the same security without the associated downtime. If you like this content, hit the like button, subscribe to receive notifications of new videos being available, and leave your comments below.